G'day everyone, welcome back to the Aaron Engineering channel. Um, I'm still working on this little project, so I thought I'd just bring you a little snapshot. Now, I'm covering this in detail on my other channel, which is covers CNC and that sort of stuff. Once again, this one's a manual machining channel. So you may recall a while ago, I probably put a community post up that I actually found the frame that this little lathe is sitting on on the side of the road. Now, instead of reinventing the wheel and spending money that, that I don't have, or, or the, to hide from the wife, I should say. Um, I brought that frame home in the back of the car with the boot open and uh, got into it here in the little workshop and uh, sanded it back, undercoated it, painted, uh, made some casters, welded those onto the base and attached them via bolts and that sort of thing. Now, uh, once I've, that was done and I put the lathe on top, I realised that it was quite flimsy. Now the frame that I found on the side of the road was only made with uh, 35, probably 35 by 35 roughly, something like that, uh, angle line. Could have been 32 or something, don't quote me on that. Now, instead of uh, cutting the sections out and joining them properly, they just overlap the angle line. And it's a bit of a pain in the backside, especially when you wanted to start clattering. Now, when I put the lathe on top, I realised that it was just a little bit flimsy and I needed to put some panelling around it to uh, sort of stiffen that up a little bit. So what I did, I went down to my local hardware store and I purchased some uh, strips of aluminium. So just uh, three millimetres uh, thickness by 25 millimetres wide and one metre length. And it's probably dearer buying it that way, but it's just easy to hold and bring home and that sort of stuff. So I cut those down and using double-sided tape, I was able to um, precisely place these on the machine ready for when I put the panelling on. Now, that the 3 mil aluminium was actually used as a packer, okay, just to pack that wall out a little bit so the panel would go on. So the whole idea of these aluminium strips is to, I've got a 3 mil discrepancy from this face to that face, then I've got another 3 mil discrepancy here. So I'll double side tape these on and this will just help me hold it while I'm getting the panelling on. And then I'll 3D print a 6mm spacer to go into here and it probably won't be the full length, it'll probably only, you know, whatever length I need for the two pot rivets. And um, I'll drill through that and that will take up that space, that cavity void. So let's put this on here. It's not real exciting, we just line them up here. The double sided tape well, it does stick, let me tell you, it sticks like... While I was at the hardware store, I bought some uh, composite panels, so 3mm aluminium composite, also known by the trade name Aluka Bond. Now, it's a thin sheet of uh, aluminium sandwiched between a sheet of plastic and another thin sheet of uh, aluminium on the, on the outside or inside, whichever way you're looking at it. One side is white, one side is black. I was originally going to put the black side out on the rear of the cabinet, but however, the shine, or the, it's a really glossy black, so I decided to put that internally and have the white sides on the outside. So I had to set that up outside. Now, I sort of jerry-rigged it outside on a couple of swivel chairs, uh, bolted the panel down, and then got into it with my little, uh, I think it's a 7.5-inch um, circular saw, and it cut it fine, no problem at all apart from the plastic and aluminium pieces flying everywhere and going all over my old car. Now, once I cut those down to size, I was able to double stack them and then cut them to get my ends, which, uh, and that made sure both ends were identical. But what I didn't account for was the person who built this frame didn't understand squareness. And unfortunately, there's probably five mil discrepancy from the top of the frame to the bottom of the frame or vice versa. So I try to hide that the best I could and blemish it in. Now, with the side panel, the last side panel I put on, 
I ha- it was very hard to do it on your own. I had the wife out help me earlier with a clamp. So this time I had some thinner double-sided tape and I put a couple of strips on the top piece of that aluminium and lined it up and stuck it on and then I was able to get my clamp on to hold it. Now off camera I've put the second strip on down the bottom and with a little bit of double-sided tape. I've put some little very thin double-sided tape here which you can't see. I just need something to help me hold that up. And I'll put the nicer side to the top. I'm going to try and balance this out. I've got a mark here on the side about where it should go. And hopefully this will help hold it for me. That will help support it until I get the clamp on it. That's got that on. All right, now I can start drilling the top holes. So I'll mark them out and uh, drill them with a bat flattery drill and uh, put some pot rivets in. All right, so you might see here that I finally got the arm built, okay? So the monitor arm. Now, I was intentionally thinking about just buying a commercially made one, uh, and then I started looking around. There wasn't one really that uh, would suit my purpose. Right, so this is the monitor arm that I uh, manufactured here today. Now, I bought this special, I think they call it T-slot aluminium, and I bought that from an aluminium supplier, and it was damaged, so I got it about half price which was really good of them and I've still got a little bit of off cut over there so I just attached that to a bit of aluminium plate that I had I didn't use the mill I used my old wall down drill press for it and uh, drilled and tapped the center hole here uh, 8 mil by 1.25 pitch and uh, attached the arm now I can change the angle because it's just one bolt down here so once I've got the controller bolted on we can have a look to see how it sits and then go from there now to give you a rough idea how this is going to sit, it's going to mount roughly here. Okay, so it's about a good height. But what I do have to make, I've got to make some standoffs. So there's some little uh, plastic standoffs that come off to here. Um, I'm not sure what this material is. Uh, I, it might be a nylon, I'm not 100% sure. My good friend and buddy, and uh, met him here through YouTube, Michael Connor, up in... Uh, New South Wales, he sent me that, so thanks mate, I appreciate it. And I think my instructor said I'd never amount to anything.
Righto, well, that's it for today, guys. I managed to get a little bit of turning done, although it wasn't that exciting. Uh, you probably saw my uh, Colchester CNC manual lathe. Get it, get the pun. And uh, yeah, my parts catcher, which is my hand going under there and uh, grabbing it, putting putting my body in the in the line of danger to get a good shot. All right, good on you guys. Look, hey, thanks for popping by. Um, hopefully. I'll try and get out here a bit more often. I've just got a bit going on with this machine. I've got to get it ready to, for tomorrow, uh, which it is. It's ready because well, I've got a friend coming around, Peter Homan, to help me wire it. Uh, he's a gem, so I really appreciate him putting some time aside for me. Thanks, guys. Catch you on the next Aaron Engineering video. Bye for now. <laughs>